As advertised, US retaliation was swift and deadly. A drone strike in the heart of ISIS-K territory, Nangarhar province, eastern Afghanistan. US Central Command claimed that a planner was killed in what they called an over-the-horizon counter-terrorism attack. I can confirm as more information has come in that two high-profile ISIS targets were killed and one was wounded. And we know of zero civilian casualties. Without specifying any future plans, I will say that we will continue to have the ability to defend ourselves and to leverage over-the-horizon capability to conduct counter-terrorism operations as needed. Today, some of the names of the 13 U.S. servicemen killed in Thursday's suicide bombing at Kabul airport were confirmed. Marine Riley McCullum from Wyoming, an expectant father. And 22-year-old Hunter Lopez from California. Up to 170 Afghans also died in the attack, which happened as people waited desperately to scramble onto evacuation flights out of the country. The UK has now confirmed that the mission to fly people out has ended today, despite knowing that more than 100 Britons and over 1,000 Afghans who qualify to leave will be left behind. Since the 13th of August, we brought nearly 15,000 people to safety. And about 1,000 military, diplomatic, civilian personnel have worked on Operation Pitting in Kabul, many, many more elsewhere. Thursday's terrorist attack was a reminder of the difficult and dangerous conditions in which Operation Pitting has been done. And sadly, I attended here yesterday the ceremony to pay our respects to the 13 US soldiers who died. It's time to close this phase of the operation now, but we haven't forgotten the people who still need to leave. We'll continue to do everything we can to help them. So much for America's over the horizon policy. What's very much on the immediate horizon is chaos. Another gunfight erupted today near Kabul airport. The fact that no one is running suggests that fear and loathing are already part of the new normal. Well, hundreds of British-based Afghans, many of whom escaped Taliban rule more than 20 years ago, joined a rally in central London today, flying the Afghan flag and calling on Western nations to do more to restore peace in the country. Many of them still have relatives in Afghanistan and say that their lives are now in danger. Porik O'Brien went to talk to some of them. In the crowd today, groups of women who'd fled Afghanistan in 98, when the Taliban took most of the country last time round. A sisterhood feeling the dread of deja vu. Yes, I remember my dark time. 22 years ago, when I left Afghanistan, I was exactly on the same situation. When you're seeing these pictures on the television, this is your lived experience from back then, is it? Yes. You know how that feels? Yes, exactly, I know that feeling. And how exactly. does that feel? That's very painful. Everyone we spoke to have immediate family still in Afghanistan. Ravina Azizi brought up three daughters in the UK well-versed in what the Taliban stand for. Like 20 years ago, it was really dark time for Afghan. Yeah, the school was shut, the women were hiding, the children, everybody, you know. That is going to repeat again. We don't want Taliban. We want freedom. As a human, we want freedom. We don't want them. So I believe that women should get freedom and get an education because it's only fair. If men get an education, women should get an education too and not be stuck at home um, in the kitchens and not doing anything else. They should, it should be fair for them too. Mary Nadira denied a future in Afghanistan but had three daughters in the UK who became the stuff of nightmares for the Taliban. My the eldest is a doctor, one, yeah. The middle one is a sonographer. Right. And she is? A paralegal. A paralegal. I see. I'm a teaching assistant. When they tell me of the past, it's like, it's scary because it's like my family are living that now. And it's, it's just scary to know that in one lifetime, you go through it twice. The women we spoke to who made it out all these years ago spoke of guilt as well, a sort of generational survivor syndrome, trauma folded back on itself again and again.